As you remember in the last video, we sandcasted the servo motor adapter, and everything worked out good. We took a couple tries at it, but we got it perfect in the end. Now, today's video is going to be on machining these adapter plates. But before we do that, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup, and I'm actually going to order some really cool parts. I'm going to order some octane way covers. I figured for 100 bucks, it's going to save me a lot of time cleaning my T-slots and keep things a little bit more tidy. I'll keep you posted on how that works out. Now, one of the problems that I had with this all was tool clearance, and I decided to use kind of like a fly cutting attachment to try to get in underneath. At first, I kind of mocked it up kind of on the wrong side, and then I realized the casting's actually kind of warped, so I need to machine the other side to make sure that it's kind of parallel with the top side. We'll have a little bit more of a look at that later, but for now, let's machine off some of these casting marks and get this other part to fit onto this. It didn't take long and we're pretty much in business with getting these two parts to fit together. The only thing is, we've got to drill some more holes in this. And to do that, we want the holes parallel. So I'm going to pull one of my little tricks out of my arsenal here, and we're going to use a little tiny level to make sure that the parts level as well. Now this doesn't have to be super duper accurate, and if you've noticed, my milling machine is not perfectly leveled either, so both of the bubbles are obviously going to have to look the same. So we're just going to adjust a little bit in the bottom. A little bit later on, we're going to have to level the mill machine out, but the butcher goes hungry, so to speak, and some of the little things that are actually big things don't get done in the shop. Now, I know, I know, I said I was going to order some more blue layout dye, so we're just going to be using some paint again here just to do some rough layouts. Um, I, I do have it in my shopping cart, and it is going to get ordered on the next big order, but ah, for now, that's just the way it's going to have to happen. Now, I rummaged through my used bolt bin, as everybody should have, and I found some extra screws that I'm going to use on this. And I'm not sure exactly what they are, so I grabbed a tap that looked pretty close, and I'm just going to line the threads up and to see what it is. And it turns out I have a 3816, and I need a 516 drill bit for this. Now, I've already done the layout on everything here and found the center line and zeroed my DRO. And off that, I'm going to go 350 thou one way and 350 thou the other way. Remember, this is just a rough casting and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect where I find the edge finder. And you know what, it doesn't even have to be perfectly level as long as it doesn't catch your eye and you'd be amazed how accurate your eye actually is if you rely on it and start to trust it. Because of the rough casting, I made sure I center drilled it because I didn't want my drill walking off on this one. And at first here, we're gonna grab this 5 16 drill bit and I did pre-measure and check it before I did this job. And I'm going to drill through not only the top and the bottom, but before we get too far ahead, I bet you you're probably wondering, some of you guys out there that are new at this, why I've got the drill chuck jammed in there. Now, I've done these jobs before, and the pressure of the milling machine pushing down and drilling will actually kind of cause it to kind of spring. And then it's going to move a little bit to the left or right, and then as soon as you break through, that spring's going to go away, and you're going to snap a drill bit, or you're going to cut an oblong hole because it's moving the part. Now what I'm doing here is, I measure the outside of those threads and the top portion of this, the one that you see painted blue there, we're just going to drill halfway through that. We're not going to drill all the way through that. This is our clearance for our threads. And I made sure it was super tight because if I was to tap this by hand, my tap is going to be absolutely perfect, perpendicular to the, actually where we're tapping, and it's going to be super easy to tap. Speaking of tapping, this is one of my new little favorite tools. I picked this up at a yard sale, and I'm not sure how expensive it really is in real life, but I got it for like, I think a Euro at a yard sale in Germany. And then this thing is pretty darn cool. It's got a little reverse thing on it, it's got a lockout on it, and it's good for these quick little jobs. And it looks like it did a decent enough job on this, because the threads turned out awesome on this. Now, let's go over to that little bolt bin that I was telling you about, and we're gonna grab a washer here of the right thickness. Now the reason why I'm grabbing this here is we're going to move on to the boring operation for that larger hole that's there. And I can't exactly be holding a drill key in there. And if I wasn't to put the spacer in here and clamp it down in the milling machine, I'm going to get a weird size when I relieve all the pressure on it. And it might work its way out of the vise. So I'm going to put this washer in here and clamp down my gap of roughly, say I think an eighth, eighth of an inch. And it's going to hold it pretty steady there and give me that clamping diameter later on down the road. Now, can anybody spot the mistake in here? That's right. The parallels are going to be a problem when I go to bore this. The parallels are going to bottom out right there in the bottom. To solve this, I've got kind of like a really old school 
kind of cheap method here. I'm gonna grab some high speed steel on my drill drawer and we're gonna put these in here. This is probably gonna be within say a half a thou by the time we're done. And I don't wanna get bogged down too much on being super duper accurate on this because after all, it's just holding a servo motor with a timing belt on it. And it's just gotta be, you know, roughly close enough and accurate enough that it's gonna work. And to be honest with you, I think a lot of people struggle with this. Sometimes we're not accurate enough. <laughs> Sometimes we're too accurate. It's kind of like Goldilocks and the three bears. We want to figure out what's just right for each situation. And that might vary on your personality as well. Perhaps you're a more particular person and everything has to be absolutely perfect. And if you enjoy that journey, that is fantastic. I can't blame a guy at all for that. But for me and the millwright in me, this is going to be just right for me. And we're going to lock everything in here now and let's get to work on boring this hole. Now, before you're watching, you watch me kind of dial this in by hand by moving that over just a little bit at each time and kind of splitting the difference until I could hear it scrape on each side. So I'm taking my test cut here now and I'm looking for that shadowing. You can kind of see some of the shadowing along the back side there, now at the top and the right hand side and the top and the right hand side there again. This tells me that I'm more than close enough to what we're looking for. And now I'm gonna take another test cut just to double check that I wasn't too, too far off. And you can see as it's cutting down, you can actually see that it's leaving a little bit of a shadow where it didn't cut. And I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is gonna turn out quite well for what we need. Now, keep in mind off camera, I'm sorry I didn't show you, is I'd actually cleaned up the bottom side where it's touching the parallels. So I can actually have a repeatable condition if I have to take this out and put it back in. I believe the technical term is the reference side. Now. I'm going to take slightly thicker cut. I think this one here is going to be 25 thou off each side. And I'm going to clean up all of that rough casting there. Now, this is a really good indication of how good the casting went. If this was a rough, bad casting, right now we'd start to see some, say, inclusions, like we saw in the part in the other video. Or, you know what, we might see some bubbling or some pores in, in the inside there. And I'm not seeing that in this job. Now, let's measure this for the final cut size, and then we'll make the final adjustments on this. I still have quite a ways to go, I think like 100 thou, but keep in mind, remember, we don't need to be absolutely accurate with this. I can be out 10 thou, 20 thou, and either way, plus or minus, and I'm still gonna be okay on this because it's an adjustable part. But we are shooting for close, and we did nail the size this time. Let's take our final pass on the up and make sure we get a really good service finish on that. Now, I really struggled as a YouTube creator, whether I was gonna show you it fitting onto the part or not, you know, cause there's always that final dramatic finish. And I'm actually gonna show it actually. I think it's gonna be really good for everyone to see this part fit on because we know damn well, everybody is gonna take that part out as soon as they cut it. And that shop guy is gonna wanna fit it right on right away to make sure that maybe their measuring wasn't out. And it's also that satisfaction, you know, that little kind of high that you get when your parts fit together and you've created something cool. Now let's move on to the next step here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that spacer and slap it on the inside now and bolt it up. And this is gonna allow us to clamp it down in another way into the vise. Now, if you're new to machining and everything, here's a really cool trick for you. If you're clamping stuff into the vise and you have a rough casting like I have, pay special attention to when we bolt this down, you're gonna see some lift in the casting. And a lot of new machinists and shop guys, their first instinct reaction is, is to grab a hammer and beat on it to push it down. But because I've got a slope in the casting, I'm never actually gonna see that backside there, that backside lifted up. If you beat that with a hammer and try to push it down, it's never gonna actually clamp down. I've got a little trick for you here. Now, perhaps this isn't the best to use with it, but I've got an Allen key here and I'm gonna bolt it from the top Keep in mind, it's a little bit bigger on the bottom. Now I'm gonna bolt it on the top and then it's gonna hold it reasonably level. And now I can come through here and tap it with a hammer and check to make sure my parallels are all bedded down. Now, if, you, if you're also new to machining as well, the reason why I have a piece of metal in there is because it stops that bounce back. If I tapped it straight with a hammer, it would just bounce back. That's why you'll see some guys use it, say a dead blow hammer, or later you're gonna see me use my lead hammer. And it's gonna stop when you hit it your part's gonna bounce back up out of the vise and get even worse, actually. But let's get back on topic here. What I did here was, I've got a drill bit that actually measured the shank of the bolt, 
and I'm just basically drilling a hole through. This is a clearance hole, and I haven't really calculated out what it's gonna be on the other side. And now that I've got it drilled on that part, we're gonna take it over to the other part. And can you spot a little bit of an error that happened when we were packing all that in the sand? That's right. This is lost foam casting, and it's a pliable surface. That means when you pack it in the sand, things are gonna move and you're gonna have problems that way. This is a bit of a designing error actually. Now, remember that bolt that I told you that we grabbed out of the parts bin there? Well, it's actually a metric bolt. And what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna drill through the top side, just to the shank diameter, and then we're just gonna poke it through onto the other side. Now when I say poke it through, I'm just gonna leave a little tiny spot face, just like you're seeing here, just so the next time I drill, it's gonna accept it and not walk everywhere. Let's walk over to the drill tap chart and see what we're working with and find out what size we're gonna need. And it turns out we're working with a metric and we're gonna to need to drill a letter size R. Now, here's the third trick of the day, okay? I'm gonna grab the most ridiculously large tap handle that I possibly can find. Now, that's for a specific reason, if you're ready for this. I'm only gonna hold it on the inside of the tap handle because I don't want all that leverage. But what I'm gonna use off this tap handle is, I can actually gauge whether this is going in vertical or not because the tap handle is so long that I can tell whether it's parallel with the work or not. And I'm both looking from both axes as well, the front and the side. Just be careful if you try to replicate this technique, you're not gonna be grabbing this tap handle from either end because there's so much leverage on there. If it catches, you may very well break that tap off in your work. And if you've ever experienced that, it's pretty much a sad news day because that's gonna either be a lot of work or starting all over again. Now, let's drill all these holes here and get this part finished up. The cool thing about this whole project here is, is this really just a shooting from the hip project? I'm actually literally designing it as, as we go through all this. And the cool part about that is, I could just put it in the vise and drill it wherever I kinda of want it. And this time, I'm conveniently gonna use a 3816 because I have them in stock but I'm not gonna use an Allen head, I'm gonna use a regular bolt, and I'm gonna show you why here in a sec. But first, let's drill a spot face on this, and then we'll slide it over to the right here, and we'll see if it's gonna be good enough for what we need. It's not too late to turn back if I don't have everything lined up yet. Keep in mind, off camera, I hit zero when I started drilling that hole, so it's just a matter of putting my cross slide back to zero, and I'm back in business. Now, this could be a tip or this could be a hindrance to you. Um, one of the things that I, I frequently do is, and keep in mind my belt's a little bit loose on my milling machine, is I'm just gonna quickly power tap it. So what I'm gonna do here, is because I've already drilled the hole and it's in location, I'm just gonna bump the head on the milling machine, have it spinning a bit, and use this inertia to slow down and start the tap in there. Hopefully I'm only gonna get maybe three or four kind of turns in there, and hopefully it doesn't break. This is a bit of a dangerous game that I'm gonna play because if it breaks off, I'm gonna be in trouble. Oh yeah, speaking of tips of the day, this is one that I picked up off the internet and I'm actually just kind of experimenting here. I've got some solder wire and then I'm just gonna throw it in here and bolt it in. However, I'm doing one thing a little bit wrong here and I wonder if you can spot what I'm doing wrong. Yep, that's right. I'm running it on the back side in the wrong direction. <laughs> and speaking of running it on the back side in the wrong direction, one of the things that unfortunately I didn't show you on camera here is, is I'm actually cutting on the back side of this. So if that nut starts to grip, it's not gonna push it into the chuck, it's actually gonna push it into the actual cutter. And I actually did have it spit out on me and break one of my cutters, but I didn't catch it on video to show you. So. Just keep in mind if you're gonna do that trick, if you cut too much on the back side, it's gonna push it out at your bit and you're gonna be kind of a bit of a sadness. Let's throw everything together and have a look to see how that worked out. So let's put this bolt in here, correction screw, that we cut the radius on the top of and make sure that it actually is gonna fit. Now, it's just a matter of bolting this down in here and grabbing our lead hammer and tapping everything down to make sure these parallels are parallel with the work. Keep in mind, there's also a video on how I modified this dead blow hammer to have lead on the end of it, and you might want to check that one out if you're interested. 
After I was done machining that with the two inch face mill, it was pretty simple just to come through and drill these holes onto size. Now let's take this bad boy out of here and clean it up a little bit and throw some paint on it. And let's fit it up and see what it looks like. I'm pretty darn happy with how this turned out. What do you guys think? Is there something I could have done better? Or is there any questions that you guys have? Just throw them in the comment section down below. I definitely read all of my comments and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. It's always important for a shop guy to take constructive criticism, whether that be me or you, because it's only gonna make us better in the end and it drives us to make better and better parts and cooler and cooler inventions. Now it's just a waiting game from here on in. We're just waiting for the time employees to show up in the mail. Hey, if you like this video, check out the other video I got in the corner here. I know you're gonna like it just as much or check out the video that I had just before this where we actually casted the parts. We'll catch you on the next one.